Right. So um, when I proposed this plenary, uh, I, I had this title and I had a little description that I gave to Dave. And I said, right, that sounds really good. And then I started thinking, well, this makes it seem like it's a foregone conclusion, right? And, and I, I think that it is, but maybe it's not uh, axiomatic in that sense. So why upstreaming, right? Um, at the end of the day, for me, I mean, I'm sure everybody has lots of reasons why they like to see upstream. Um, for me, it's, it's ultimately, about, ultimately about having your code live beyond a very, very limited lifespan of the development cycle. Um, and, you know, that's really the only viable option for that is, is to get things uh, into an upstream community where the real, you know, the primary benefits are that you get lots of good maintenance and lots of good validation by a much wider community than you could possibly uh, provide yourself personally. Uh, and of course, over enough time, uh, as you get adoption and uptake, uh, you know, you, you've, you've made the lives of many, many people across uh, a, a wide variety of communities, you know, sort of a lot better and easier. And that really is certainly what Linux is all about and certainly what Linaro is all about on, on ARM. So, you know, I, again, at the risk of, of making a lot of assumptions here, that, that's, that's really what I, think, uh, what I think we're sort of here to do. Um, whoops. There we go. OK. So how to get code upstream faster? Well, in a lot of cases, I mean, for, for those of us that have, have done this for a little while, uh, sometimes getting the actual work upstream uh, can seem a great deal more daunting than doing the actual work was in the first place. Uh, in, in the graphics working group, I, I think you know uh, we've had a pretty good we've had a pretty good record of this. It's not you know it's not up there at batting a thousand, but I think in general uh, in general it's been pretty good. Uh, and so you know I'm gonna over the next few slides I think I'm gonna go over some some approaches and some some lessons learned especially that uh, that we've encountered in dealing with a variety of upstream communities both within the kernel and well uh, well up into user space projects. Uh, and so hopefully you guys will find that, uh, find that enlightening as, as, to, as to, you know, how you might go about your, your own projects. Uh, of course, you know, as you see, the, the Lenaro mantra is always upstream, upstream, upstream. That's, that's the only point of really doing anything uh, from the Lenaro perspective. But as I say, there are a lot of different, uh, different projects that you'll interact with um, across a wide variety of, uh, of communities. So how do, you, how do you deal with this? How do, how do you manage all these different, uh, different approaches to doing things? So in our case, um, I, I know this sounds cheeky, and, and, and it's sort of meant to be a little bit. But at the end of the day, sometimes you have a project, and it's, it's very, very clever, at least you think it is. And there's not really an upstream community that seems appropriate for it. Um, we've, got, we've actually had a bunch of these things. Uh, the most, most recent and in most ways, I think the most successful version of all this is, uh, is the, the adoption of DMA buff for doing uh, buffer sharing between devices in the kernel. That's something that didn't exist in the kernel before, and there it is now. Um, there, there have been a number of other examples of things like this uh, in, uh, in projects that, that we've dealt with, uh, especially in the, in the OpenGL space. Uh, where later versions of the API get rid of lots of functionality that technically doesn't happen on the GPU, but gosh, it's still critical for being able to write applications. So uh, in a lot of cases, actually, this is a real viable option for us. And of course, you know, uh, some of this means that the, there is a further upstream that your code goes into. But you know, for us, in order to make sure that we have what we need in place, we, we've actually had to you know, just sort of own up to, to hosting some projects ourselves. But let's, let's talk about, I think, the upstream the way that most of us think about it. Um, so yes, of course, make sure the upstream actually wants what you're doing. Uh, there's an old expression, uh, never try to teach a pig to sing, because it wastes time and annoys the pig. Um, <laughs> and I, I, think about that, I think about that often, because there have been a number of times uh, over, certainly over my time in, in Lenaro, which, which is fastly approaching two years, uh, that we've actually avoided doing lots of work that nobody was going to want. Um, you know, there's, it, time is precious, as I'm sure we all know, uh, especially those of us that, say, spent 15 hours getting here, um, that you know, your, your time is, is, means a lot and it's worth a lot. And, and there's nothing worse than, than wasting it. So our step one, in, in general, in the projects that we undertake in the graphics group, is simply to introduce ourselves to, to the lists for whatever developer community we're engaging. And, you know, uh, with an introduction, say, this is what we want to do, and this is why we think it's a good idea. And 
get get feedback from that. If if people say, yeah, that's great, then then we move right on ahead. And if they say, why the hell do you want to do that? Then we kind of <laughs> we say, okay, maybe there's further justification here, or maybe we just kind of back away. Uh, so a, a good example of this was uh, at some point uh, last year or so, we, we thought, well, Surface Flinger on Android is, is all based on OpenGL ES 1.1. And gosh, wouldn't it be nice if it was all modern in OpenGL ES 2.0? And we proposed it to the Android community, and they said, why would you want to do that? <laughs> and it turns out they have, they have some very, very fundamental reasons for not doing it, and, and some that, that, are, that are less so, but at the end of the day, what, what we were planning on doing wasn't going to be met with a terribly good level of acceptance, so, so we left it. Um, this is an important one. Um, in software, you know, beyond the rules of syntax that we're all familiar with uh, for, the, for the languages we use, um, it rarely matters what actual coding convention you use. It, it, really, it really doesn't. Um, but it does matter for large projects that you actually have one. And most large projects that you're going to engage actually do, and they actually care about it. And it, it may be meaningful, it may be more meaningful to them in a lot of ways than what the actual project brings to the table because somebody's got to maintain this, and without that, that's a nightmare. So, um, so do look into this. Most projects will have some kind of documentation about what their standards are, even if it's just, here, run indent this way and you'll be fine. Um, it's, uh, we've seen too many, uh, too many instances in our work of, of patches and other work that's literally just been ignored because of the way it's structured and the way it's coded, not because of the merit of the technical merit of the work at hand. And, and that's always a crying shame. Um, this is an important one. This, this is the first one I would cover under lessons learned. Um, be realistic about the scope of your work. Um, if you're engaging a very large piece of work on an existing project, uh, put yourself in the place of the maintainer. Um, would you want to review this patch that's 6,000 pages long and touches every single file in the project? If the answer is no, they probably don't either. And you're probably not going to get very much response and very much uptake on the work. Um, so the lesson here I would suggest is to submit, submit small patches early, often, and uh, with as few dependencies as possible. Um, for us, this, this very real world example comes from the work that we've done to uh, add OpenGL ES support to, uh, to the Unity desktop shell uh, for Ubuntu. And it, uh, it's cost us a lot of time in getting that code merged and uh, getting uptake from, from the team itself because frankly, they've got a lot on their plates. They don't have time to, you know, to deal with a lot of stuff that for them is fringe. <laughs> Um, this is my little metaphor, um, beware of flying rocks and garbage. Um, this basically comes to the typical reaction that I perceive from at least your first submission. Uh, I, I recently heard a, a well-respected kernel maintainer say something to the effect, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, that half the fun of open source development is getting to tear into people for the patches that they submit. Now, I think he was actually paraphrasing from somebody else, not necessarily something that he believes, but I think most of us have seen, have seen the truth of this. Um, uh, I, I seem to recall a, a couple months ago uh, a patch set by, uh, by Catalan Marinus that caught a, an interesting set of invective by a couple of the other maintainers involved. Uh, and uh, I, I hope, I, I like to hope, that that's um, the very most pathological example of what I'm talking about. But, you know, I, I, I've seen that on a couple of occasions. So uh, anyway, uh, most projects have, have this as sort of a rite of passage by, by, one, by one degree or another. Um, but at the end of it, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of paraphrase from another developer I know. Uh, if you're going to develop in an open source community, just have a thick skin. And of course, uh, the last thing here, just remember it gets better with time. And that, I mean that both in the sense of your individual early engagements with a project and then over time, as well as um, your engagement across many projects over time. Um, Overall, we've had really good interactions with various projects. Um, the maintainers and the communities there have been great. Um, in cases where we've, we've acted as upstream, we've actually started to see enough uptake that we're actually getting contributions from uh, development organizations outside of Lenaro. Uh, and in the case of something like the uh, OpenGL ES support for Cairo that we did, we've seen that go uh, from, from project to into the upstream to, to into a upstream release and now into a core component of another project, which, which is something like the Whalen project. 
Um, and and of course, uh, as I mentioned, the you know the the, the hard work, the hard lessons learned on the uh, on the Unity project, uh, seeing that go into uh, Ubuntu 12.04, and right now as we speak, the merge efforts that are going on to get that code into the upstream proper uh, are starting really to pay off and to, to really feel worthwhile. So, I, I think. Again, I think we're overall, we're a better team for it, and I think uh, the, the guys on the team are, are a lot more, uh, a, a, lot, a lot richer engineers for it. So um, I think that's my lessons learned. I hope, uh, hope you guys can take something away from that. Thanks.